Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is CV with Taraza and I'm a software engineer. This video is sponsored by Gigs for Gigs. Uh, so Gigs for Gigs is an online platform. Uh, it's a learning platform where you can learn um, everything about software development. You want to learn how to create apps, go to Gigs for Gigs and purchase a course over there. Um, so these courses are taught by really, really skilled software engineers and um, I really, really recommend it, especially if you um, want to learn how to create software or if you have a, a technical interview coming up, you can come to um, the link that's in the description. Um, so these technical interviews usually involve data structures and algorithms so for example you can purchase this course over here click on the course and then if if you enter my name in the coupon section you will get a discount so the the coupon is severe and then click on apply and then boom you've got a discount over there and then yeah just purchase the course so um, in this video, we are going to be doing a lead code problem. It's called number of islands. So given an M by an M by N 2D binary grid, which represents a map of ones, ones representing land and zeros, uh, zeros represent water, return the number of islands. So a bit more explanation here. An island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. You may assume, assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. So basically, if you look at this 2D array here, we've got ones and zeros. One represents land and zero represents water. An island is formed by connecting ones adjacent um ones vertically and horizontally so for example here you see we start here we've got one and this one is connected to this one and to this one and if you look at this one this one is connected to this one as well and this one is connected to this one so you see um there's like all these ones are basically connected to each other therefore this is one island we don't have any other one over here, so the output should be one. So looking at the second example, we've got this one connected to this one, and then we've got water, but this one is connected to this one, and this one is connected to this one, and this one is connected to this one. So this is one island. These four ones form one island, and uh, we've got this one over here. There's no one here, there's no one here, no one here, no one here. So this is one island. All right, so now we've got two islands and then we've got this one connected to this one. And there's nothing up, up and to the right. So this is another island on its own. So the output is three. We've got three islands now. So I hope that makes uh, sense. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you all how to do this thing now all right so we're going to be using java so the first thing that you want to do you need to check you need to have edge cases all right we need to check if the grid let me increase this a bit so if the grid dot length is equal to zero or um the grid is equals to null then we just return zero all right so how are we gonna go about solving this so we need to do a, a depth first search once we visit this one when we're here we need to check to the up we need to check up first um, if we have a one if we do have a one we move to that one we recursively um, check up sorry let me just start let me start over so let's say we're here all right we need to check is there one to the left is there one to the right is there a one up is there a one down okay if there is a one in any of 
these sides that are mentioned then we move to that one but we need to change this current one that we at we are at right now to zero so that we don't visit it again all right so once we move to this one we check again is the one up is the one to the left is the one down is the one to the right and then you see that this is this we're doing this recursively each and every one we visit we we do the check once we are done once once there isn't any one up down left and right then we return one that that one represents one island okay um so you, you're gonna see that um in a sec so let's define a variable here called in um I'm just going to call it count. Firstly, this will be the number of islands. Okay. It's going to be zero initially. Then we need, this is a 2D array. We need a for loop that will point to this row. That will, and that for loop will just iterate. It will run. It will come to this index, index zero. It will then come to this row, which is index one, come to this row, which is index two, and then it come to this row, which is index three. So a simple for loop that will, will help us do that. So I will represent the row. And then as long as I is less than grid dot link. And I needs to increment. All right. So what do we need to do once we are at this row, we need to um, check each column in each row, right? So we need another for loop for that. So we need a, nest, a nested for loop. So it's, uh, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna call this J and we're gonna do this as long as J is less than grid at position I, which is the row, okay, dot length. And then we want to make sure that J increments, right? Okay, so we want to make sure that we only perform this function if we see a one. So if grid at position I, at row I and column number J is equal to a one, all right? Remember this grid is holds characters hence the single quotes then we need to increment count but the way that we're going to increment count we need to make sure that we are not counting the number of ones make need to make sure that we run a function that will that will do a depth first search to see how many ones are connected once once we see how many ones are connected and we formed an island then we return one all right, so uh, this is a function I'm gonna define later. It's, I'm gonna call it depth first search. It's gonna take this grid, it's gonna take i, it's gonna take j. All right, so let's go ahead and define the function um, right here at the bottom. It's gonna return an integer because right at the end, we wanna increment count by whatever this function uh, returns. So depth first search, uh, remember, it takes a grid. And it will take an integer i as well as an integer j. Right. So now we need to check that we are not out of bounds. All right. So let's say that we're here. We can't check a value that is here because I'll, we can't check a value that is to the left because we don't have any value and we can't check a value that is up because there isn't any value, all right? And also we need to check that, um, let's say we are busy traversing, traversing, traversing. Once we see a zero, we need to stop, all right? So, yep, let's write an if statement. If I, I meaning the row, okay, which is this one. If I is less than zero, in that um, we trying to we trying to check what is above or i 
is greater or equal to grid dot length meaning we've reached this we've reached the last value and we're trying to check um, what is to the right of this value so this will, will handle that we'll make sure that we if, if we try to do that then we just stopped or else we'll, we'll get an error or j is less than zero sorry i said um here this i this i checks if we're trying to access a value that is above all right and this here checks if we if if we're here now let's say we're at this value if we're trying to check the value that is below this value then this will handle that okay this j now let's say we're here and we're trying to access a value that is to the right within this row i mean to the left within this row so a value that would be somewhere over here then this will handle that we'll check for that or um say we're here and we're trying to access a value that is to the right within this row then that would be j grades or equal to grid at position i dot length all right or if grid at i and j is equal to zero then we just want to return a zero return a zero meaning that um we won't be incrementing this count over here moving on so if this does not run that means we are at a one we need to make sure now that this grid this um this one that we are currently at we change it to zero because we don't want to revisit it would revisit it again all right then now we need to recursively visit the values that are that are adjacent to the the value that we are at right now by that i mean if we're here we need to visit the va this value we need to visit this value this one and this one all right so to do that um call dfs again which is this function we pass the grid now um let's do i minus one which is visiting the value that is up at the top all right j will remain the same then dfs again uh, pass the grid i plus one which is visiting the value that is at the bottom and then j remains the same dfs now i will remain the same we want to visit uh the value that is to the left all right so we'll say j minus one uh because if we're here and we decrement j that means we'll be pointing to this value all right and once we point to this value we'll run this recursive function all over again in this value and this would have been zero when we when we start running this okay so we won't count this one again so now uh and last one dfs grid i um remains the same now we want to visit the value to the right all right so this recursive fun this recursive function will run until we hit this edge case over here so let's run the code and see if that runs or not uh missing return statement oh sorry so right at the end we need to return count okay so let's run it and see if that works or not missing return oh sorry so at the end uh once we've run everything this recursive function will return one island so we need to return one here right at the end all right um so let me just double check yeah i think everything is 
set now and it works so just a quick recap all right so what we're doing here we have this uh nested for loop so we want to visit every row and when we are in a row we want to visit each each column within the row and within that each column within a row we run this dfs function that will check um if we have an adjacent one and if we do we'll return one all right um so we'll do that recursively as long as we have um an adjacent one we'll just keep calling this recursive function to check okay i'm at one so it'll recursively call this function which will try to access the value at the top this edge case will uh, run then it will it will stop but before returning this one it will again run this recursive function which will um when we here we'll look here all right we do have a one and within this one it'll run this entire recursive function again so until until we visit each and every one all right then right at the end after it has converted each and every one to a zero it'll return a zero all right as long as we don't see a zero of a, uh as long as we don't see a zero this recursive function will run okay so yeah i hope that makes sense if you found this video very interesting and helpful please make sure that you like you subscribe don't forget to share the video and i will see you in the next video cheers